everyone. Praise the Lord again to everyone. Good evening. Uh, we welcome you to our virtual service, our virtual Bible study, our virtual Wednesday evening Bible study. We are Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith, and we are glad that you have tuned in uh, to hear us on tonight, to hear a word from the Lord. So we're going to go ahead and get started and open up with the word of prayer, and then we'll go right into our lesson on tonight um, so that we can get uh, the message that God is sending to us. Amen? Amen. So once again, we welcome you to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, Lord Jesus. We thank you because you're such a loving God, Lord Jesus. You're a patient God, Lord Jesus. You're a merciful God, and we thank you for all of that, Lord Jesus. We thank you for such a great salvation on tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask tonight that you will bless people across this world, Lord Jesus. Yes. And Lord, remember those who are grieving, Lord. Remember those in Florida yes. who have yes. lost loved ones, Lord yes. Jesus. Lord, comfort their hearts, Lord Jesus. Yes. Lord, bless the people there, Lord Jesus. Bless the leaders across this world, Lord. Continue, we ask, uh, we pray that you will continue to heal sick bodies and sick minds across yes, this world, Lord Jesus. We thank you for those that you brought through this pandemic, Lord Jesus, successfully. Thank you for those that you have comforted and strengthened, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless the nation, Lord. Continue to bless the world, Lord, because sometimes people are still suffering some of the after effects, Lord Jesus. Some people are still depressed. Lord, we ask that you send the yes. uh, mental stability that's needed, Lord Jesus. Lord, just heal every wit, Lord. Heal all the uh, mankind. Heal us. Uh, in our minds, healers, in our bodies, healers, in our spirit, Lord Jesus. Lord, send forth your healing in this world and in this nation, Lord Jesus. Continue yes, to Lord. strengthen and bless your people, Lord. We ask that you bless the Bible study on tonight. Open up our understanding to your words, Lord. Bless the teacher on tonight, Lord Jesus. Bless everyone that we're here. Touch all of our hearts. Bless every family that will look at this particular video, Lord Jesus. We ask your blessings and help us to do what you would have us to do. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we give your name the glory and praise at all times. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you once again for tuning in to our Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, if you can see the title on your screen, uh, it says the way of the ungodly. So um, I'll finish that up. I didn't type the entire thing in, but we're going to start our reading at Psalms chapter number one. So we thank and we praise God for everybody who's listening in. I say praise the Lord to you uh, in uh, Facebook land. <laughs> Amen. So let's go to Psalms chapter number one. And we're going to read it in its entirety, and then I'll go back and give the title and tell uh, the purpose of the Bible study on tonight. Amen. And it reads Psalms chapter number one. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Verse 4 says, however, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen? Amen. So that's the concluding of Psalms chapter number one. Amen. And so uh, the title on tonight's Bible study is The Way of the Ungodly Shall Perish. Amen? The way of the ungodly shall perish. So why would we study about that on tonight? Most of us who tune in to Bible study or come in, uh, we're seeking to please the Lord. But we know that there's many different people who will tune in and hear the word of the Lord. Perhaps they're not where the Lord would want them to be. And so God wants us to inform those people who are not living up to God's standards, not living the way God would have them to be, not born again. Uh, the purpose is to persuade them or persuade people to change from their sinful or their evil ways. Now, it even could be uh, some people that are found in the body of Christ, right, that are 
born again that may not be walking in the will of the Lord. So the Lord would send his message uh, to let people who were not walking in the ways of God, to let them know if they continue on in that path and continue on that way, that they're going to perish. In other words, verse 6, it said, The Lord knows the way of the righteous. So God knows those who are righteous and those who are following him. But he said, The way of the ungodly shall perish. In other words, uh, the path of the godless, of the ones who are not walking in the will of the Lord and not walking with the Lord, uh, that path is going to lead to doom and to destruction. Now, God is not willing that any perish, uh, but that all will come to repentance, right? And so that's why we teach on tonight uh, to kind of put a flash alert out there. You know, the way of the ungodly shall perish. So if you're walking in the way, if you're walking in sin, and if you're walking in unrighteousness, that path that you're on is going to lead you to eternal damnation. It's going to lead you to destruction. So we send a warning, and we put out that little orange cone like, hey, be careful, this is a warning. You don't want to go this way. You want to change your mind, and you want to go a different way, amen, because you don't want to doom, meet doom, and you don't want to meet eternal destruction. Okay, so the purpose of a Bible study entitled The Way of the Ungodly Shall Perish is to persuade those that are on that road to turn to Christ and to change their way so that they don't perish. So we'll just go verse by verse again over Psalms chapter number one. Say, blessed or happy is the man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So happy is the man that's not taking advice from sinners to do wrong. Amen. So we don't want to take our advice from people that don't know the Lord and don't know the ways of the Lord. We want to take our advice from godly people because if we take advice from godly people, it's going to lead us to the path of righteousness and in the right way that God would have us to go. And he says, uh, nor standeth in the way of sinners. So blessed is the man that doesn't stand in the way of sinners. You're not in the path and walking around, running around, you know, doing deeds with sinners. He said, nor he that sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So you're not um, the one that's scoffing or making mockery of the people of God and, and God's ways. Uh, you're not insulting when it comes to uh, the ways of righteousness or haughty. You know, I don't need to do all of that, you know. But blessed is the man that doesn't do these things. So blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, uh, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. It said, but his delight... Uh, in the law of the Lord, and in his, in his law doth he meditate day and night. And so it's good to be with the Lord, to delight ourselves in the word of the Lord, and to live according to the words of the Lord. Uh, they say in his law, in God's law, doth he meditate day and night. So we know that there's scoffers. Oh, man, you go in the Bible study again. Oh, man, you went to church last Sunday, didn't you? You don't have to go to church this Sunday. But God says we meditate in his law day and night. We need the Lord constantly. Amen? 24-7, 365. You know, and if we get down to the seconds, we need him every second. Amen? Because in a split second, we can make a decision that can ruin the rest of our lives. Amen? So we need the Lord. Amen? So we don't want those to be around the people that's, you know, scoffing and say, don't take all of that. You know, to me, it takes all of that and more, you know, to live for the Lord and worship the Lord. I mean, when they uh, are out in their sporting events, they give it all. They, they, they're watching their sporting events. They're going down there paying their money. It takes all of that for them to be happy. But how much more for us to live a life that's pleasing unto the Lord? And, and it says, and he shall be, this man now, that delight himself in the law of the Lord, he shall be planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. So we have seasons, amen. His leaf also shall not wither. We're not going to die out, amen. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But it talks about the ungodly. So if the Bible mentions the ungodly, then all of those of us who are ministered in the word of God, we have to be able to address the ungodly too. Sometimes people say, well, we just let's just talk about about love, talk about the love. And when we talk about the ways of the ungodly and try to persuade them to change, that is the love of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the ungodly are not so, the Bible says, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. In other words, they're not safe on judgment day. You know, the ungodly are not going to be safe on judgment day because they're not going to, as they say, have a leg to stand on. You know, they have no excuse for why they did not serve and worship the true and the living God. So they're not going to stand in the judgment and neither will sinners be in the congregation of the righteous. So they won't stand among the godly. Amen. There will be a difference. God is going to make a separation. Amen. On that day. 
And it says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And so we want to talk about the ungodly on tonight, you know, because the way of the ungodly, it, they're going to perish. Or they're going to, it's going to lead to doom or lead to destruction. Okay, I haven't been saved all of my life. You know, I have not. You know, and I thank God for his mercy and his grace. But there was a time before I got saved that I was one of these people, the ungodly. I did a lot of ungodly things, things that were in the flesh. Now, now people look at it as just going according to the course of this world. Well, guess what? The course of this world is, is, is manifested predominantly in wickedness and sinful flesh because all mankind is, was, we're born into sin and shaping in iniquity. So we are born in sin. So we are born to do wrong. Amen. So it's, it's no surprise if I stand here and say before the Lord saved me, before I was converted, before I was born again, that I did evil things. And so it's a lot of people in this world that's just like I was before I got saved. There's a lot of people that are lying. There's a lot of people that's cheating. There's a lot of people that's stealing. There's a lot of people committing fornication. But they don't, they're not convicted by it because everybody's doing it. Well, just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean that you should do it. Amen. Because what you're doing, if it's ungodly acts, is going to lead you to a place of eternal destruction if you don't change from that lifestyle, if you don't give your life to Christ. So the way of the ungodly is going to perish. So even though I got good grades in school and, and I did a few good things for people and people thought I was just sweet as pie and things like that. Well, you can be sweet as pie and you can be beautiful or whatever, but you're still a sinner. And if you're a sinner, you're considered to be ungodly, unlike God. Because the Bible says if you have not the spirit of Christ, then you none of his. If we can't walk in the ways of the Lord, then you have some ungodly acts. And, and if you haven't been converted, your whole nature is a sinful nature. You know, even if in your mind you want to do what's good and what's right, there's a law in your member. It's called sin. It's called the Adamic nature that's going to lead you against the Word of God. So just being in the body that you dwell in, that that body that we dwell in is against God. That's why we need to be born again. That's why we need to have our sins washed away. That's why we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why we need to meditate on the word day and night to see what it is the Lord will have us to do so that we can walk in the right ways. And so there are people that have never been born again. And yes, they, you know, try to do good here and there. But the Bible lets us know all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So none of us have matched up to God's standards, and it's impossible to do so without his forgiveness and without his spirit and re without him regenerating us. Amen? So we need to know who the ungodly are. So the ungodly are people who were just like I was before I got saved. And so, yes, people th thought I was wonderful, you know, most of them. And, and I had fun and I laughed and things. But I did some sinful things and things that God was not pleased with. And so just because people go to, quote, unquote, church doesn't mean that they are saved as yet. You know, so before my conversion, I loved going to church. You know, it was something about going there. But I was not saved until God actually saved me. So even while I was going to church, even when I was in college, you know, I got up, you know, one morning and I went to, you know, church near college. And, and, and so because I love that this one particular church, I said, well, I'll put my membership there, even though, you know, I already had membership in my hometown, but I was in my college town, and so I decided to put my membership at a church there. And so the pastor there said, oh, well, we're glad to have you here, you know, and he says, look at her, doesn't she look wonderful? Uh, he says, uh, a nice holy woman. And I was young, you know, I was a young woman, you know, 20-something years old, you know, early 20s. And so I sat there, and when he said that, I kind of cringed. And so I'll tell you why I kind of cringed on the inside. Thank God for a conscience and conviction, because I knew, even though I stood there at that church, put in my membership, and this man called me a holy woman, well, guess what? My boyfriend was back in my dorm room. And we spend the night together, and we, you know, they call us sleeping together, but I was a fornicator. So I was out of the will of the Lord, and I was living a sinful life. But there was not much conviction, because it seems like everybody does it, right? But I was an ungodly person, you know. And so this pastor attributed holiness to me, which it really was not, you know, because I wasn't holy, and I wasn't living a holy lifestyle at that time. 
didn't have the Holy Ghost, you know. So anyway, just to let you know. So just because you walk in the course of this world and it seems like everything is okay, but you have to look at the life that you live. First of all, have you been born again? What is the life that you're living? Are you living in sin? Are, you know, so just because, you know, everybody's in fornication, which means you're having sex with someone that you're not married to. So there's a lot of people having sex with people that they're not married to. That's called fornication. That's an ungodly act. That's against God because God God has high standard morals. He called it holiness, you know, living right. And so God's plan was for one man and one woman to be together and to be married. Amen? Amen. So um, I was ungodly. And so not only that, but I didn't mind lying. It seemed like I came from a family of liars. So we lied quite a bit, you know. It was no big thing for me to lie, you know. So lie, cheat, steal, whatever, you know. I mean, but, you know, I, I blended in because I was amongst people that did that, right? So it was not a big thing, you know, uh, at that time until God began to call me out and, and put the spotlight on my activities and say, hey, I want you in heaven with me and you can't go to heaven doing these things. Right? So I was ungodly. I had some sinful ways. I said things out of my mouth that were not very pleasant. Some what they call curse words or using profane language. You know, I did that before I was saved. So uh, cursing and profane language is ungodly. That God doesn't want, he doesn't talk like that. He's pure and he's wholesome. Right? Okay, so I had some evil ways. You know, there's some times, you know, people made me mad. I would say some things about them. Not only that, there were some times when uh, violence took over. I mean, uh, you grow up in in the atmosphere and things happen and so you you learn how to speak your language you know physically you know and so that's not God's way so I had a lot of ungodly acts and so I say that to say you know this is what people call common every day today and they go along in life as if it doesn't matter but God said yes it does matter those are sinful deeds and I want you to change from that because the way of the ungodly shall what perish. So the way of the ungodly. So ungodly are, are people who do sinful, evil, wicked works. And they, or they just flat out deny that there is a God or that there is a true living God or they are in idolatry. They serve and worship something that's not a God. There's only one true and living God and he is the creator of heaven and earth. And so if you're serving anything and worshiping anything other than the true and the living God, you're in idolatry. And so that's being ungodly because godly people they worship the true and the living God. So sometimes people are born again and even in the church, but they disobey God. So they have some ungodly ways. But God said, if, even after we're born again, if we walk in ungodly ways, we're going to perish just like those that have never known the Lord. Amen? So, so God is looking at ungodly ways. And so we, he doesn't want us to be ungodly. So the purpose of the Bible study is to persuade all men whether they've known the Lord or not, to change from their sinful, evil ways, right? So we don't want to be immoral. We don't want to lack reverence for God. So ungodly people, they lack reverence for God. I think I mentioned a few weeks ago about an uncle. You know, they laughed and mocked and said, you going down and you're giving that preacher your money. Uh, you need to go pull him to the side and say, hey, you preaching and I'm singing, let's split the offering, you know, things like that. That's a lack of reverence for God. And, it's a, and with some people, it is ignorance. Uh, but still, it's a lack of uh, reverence for God. So sometimes people don't know. But God sent out messages like me and all the other preachers to inform people. He said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But God wants to inform people that the road that you're on is going to lead you to destruction unless you change. Amen. So the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. So let's go. Um, well, I'll, I'll just read you. I won't have you go to Romans 5 and 6. I'm just going to read. It says, for when we were yet without strength. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So God knew that the world was full of ungodly people. But because of his love for us so much, the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So Christ died for you. You might be ungodly, but Christ died for you. I, and when I was ungodly, you know, I, God died for me. And so God was sending a message, you know, at the point that I got saved, that, hey, I died for you. You don't have to live that way anymore. You can live a better life. You can live a clean life. You can live a godly life. You don't have to do those things anymore. Amen. So sometimes people just think, oh, I have to do this to get by. No, you don't have to do this to get by. You can do something different because God has already 
sent his he sent the Savior into the world. Christ has already come. He's already died on the cross for the ungodly. So we became ungodly through Adam. We know that God told Adam not to eat off of the tree of good and evil, but his wife listened to the devil. She was deceived. She took and she ate the fruit, and then Adam ate the fruit, and so mankind fell into sin, and that was because of the disobedience of Adam, and because of that, we all are born into sin with this Adamic nature, with the law and its members to do what's wrong. So God know that we had this problem in our flesh that we we're born to do wrong, but God says, I'm going to die on the cross and so that you can be born again so that you can do right. Amen. So you're born and you, you're you going to do wrong. There's The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all of us have done wrong. He said, but you can be born again so that you can do right. Amen. So God wants us to be godly, not ungodly. So let's go to Titus chapter number 2, verses 11 through 13. Titus, the book of Titus in the New Testament. Amen. Titus chapter number 2. And we'll begin our reading at verse 11. So we're going to read three scriptures there. Titus 2, verse 11, 12, and 13. And it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Isn't that something? Isn't that wonderful? It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So the gospel is being preached everywhere. Everybody's heard about Jesus Christ dying on the cross for their sins. So the grace of God brings salvation, which means God brought forth forgiveness. When he died on, when Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, that brought forth a way that all of our sins could be forgiven, washed away, never to be brought up again. And so we apply that to our lives when we are baptized. Water baptism, being fully immersed in water in the name of Jesus Christ, washes away all of our sins. He said, but the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So God brought the gospel to everybody. Everybody has a chance to be saved. So now uh, the message is out that the gospel has been preached, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he took our place on the cross, that we could live again. And so now that the message is out, what are we going to do? So now we have a choice as human beings. We have a choice. Either we're going to live for God or we're going to accept Christ as our Savior, which means we're going to be born again of the water and the Spirit, or we're going to keep on living our same old sinful life because it's pleasurable to us. Uh, but God wants you to know if you choose to live that same old sinful, pleasurable life in sin, that your end is going to be destruction. Or well, somebody said, oh, well, people know they're going to hell. People know they're going to hell. But just because people know they're going to hell doesn't mean that we shouldn't constantly remind them so that at some point they might change their mind. Because guess what? One day I heard the gospel. Well, did I know that, you know, I was doing some things wrong? Yeah, I knew I was doing some things wrong. But one day God opened up my ears. So we will always, God is going to always have the gospel being preached and always give forth this message because because people change, their circumstances change, whereas they may not have been able to hear 10 years ago, well, something has happened. So now their ears are open. You know, so we don't know when God unlocks people's ears. We don't know when God touches people's heart. So it's our job that when God tells us to minister a certain message, that's what we do because we don't know the state of people's heart. And guess what? Heart may not change, but God is making people accountable for what they have heard, whether or not they change or not, whether or not they choose to go on a different path. They're accountable to God. So when they stand before the Lord on Judgment Day, they don't have any excuses. Just like we said earlier, they don't have a leg to stand on. They can't stand and say anything I didn't know because God has told you. God has told everybody. But anyway, we want everybody to know everybody's without excuse because it says the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. So the salvation salvation is for everybody. It's, it's free for the taking. Anybody that wants to be born again, they can be born again. It's says, teaching us that denying what? Denying ungodliness. So we have to deny ungodliness. We have to deny doing those sinful acts, the things that, yeah, sometimes bring us pleasure. I can tell you, before I was born again, I had fun out there and sin, but I was on my way to hell. 
Yes, I had a lot of fun in the things that I did. So anybody said that there's no pleasure in sin, they're lying. It's a lot of fun in sin, but it's temporary. It's not going to last. It's not eternal, you know. So you're going to have to pay for those things that we do against our Creator. Uh, the Bible lets us know Moses chose rather to um, suffer the affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So there are pleasures in sin, but it's only for a season. So we have to be like Moses. We can choose to suffer affliction with the people of God just for a little while. It's just for a season too because we're going to live in eternity with the Lord with no more afflictions. Amen. All tears are going to be wiped away. No more death and all of that once we get into the heavens with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So the Bible teaches us that denying, we have to deny the ungodly and the worldly lust. In other words, those sinful pleasures. We have to deny ourselves that and we should live soberly, which means now we should live God-fearing lives or God-honoring lives. We have to live soberly. We have to live righteously. We have to live like God wants us to. It says godly. Where? In this present world. So we have to live, we have to change the way we live right down here. And God doesn't tell us to do anything that he's not going to empower us to do. That's why we got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is power. That's why he says, if you have not the spirit of Christ, you're none of his. Amen. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. To help us to do the things that we need to do and to mortify the deeds of this flesh. Amen. And it says, looking for that blessed hope. We're looking for the blessed hope, which means the return of Jesus Christ to take us to glory. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's what we're looking forward to. So while we're looking forward to that, we should be living godly lives down here. So the Bible tells us, uh, it says, teaching us that denying ungodly lust. So we, we have to deny being ungodly because the ungodly are going to perish. They're going to be eternally doomed if they don't change. Amen? Amen? Amen. So examples of lack of reverence for God. So showing uh, some examples of ungodly people. Amen? So it goes into many different facets. You know, so Jude 18, and I'm not going to have you go there. I'm just going to read for the sake of time because we are going to go into some other scriptures. But Jude 18 says, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. So mockers, people making fun of those that are living godly, um, and they're walking after their own ungodly lust. So those type of people, they don't show any reverence for God because they're mockers. They mock at God or sneer at God like he's not real. Amen? Amen. Okay, another example of mockers are those who have a lack of reverence for God. In Job chapter 21 and verse 14, it talks about the wicked. And it says, therefore they, meaning the wicked, the ungodly are those that lack reverence for God, the wicked. They say, therefore they say unto God, depart from us, for we desire not to know the knowledge of your ways. For we desire not the knowledge of your ways. So that's Job 21 and 14. The wicked say, it says, therefore they say unto God. So wicked people talk to God, believe it or not. Well, I'm not doing none of that, you know. So the wicked people talk to God and they say, depart from us. They tell God, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. So even when God is using his saints down here on earth and we witness to people and we talk to them about the Lord, they say, get away from here with me. Get away from me with that stuff. So if they're talking to us and we're led of God and we have the Holy Spirit, they're, they're pretty much telling God to get on, you know. But wicked people will talk to God. They'll put it out in the atmosphere. Well, God, if you're out there, I'm not changing. You know, so people are bold in their brains and they say some things. So those people have a lack of a reverence for God. And so they say unto God again, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of your ways. We don't want to know nothing about you. In other words, we live in too good a life down here on our own. We're going to do our own thing. You know, you gave us choice. Our choice is to do this. So they have a lack of reverence for God. Proverbs also uh, it says, they would none of my counsel and they despised all of my reap. And so we know in Proverbs chapter 1 it's talking about wisdom and wisdom comes from God. And so wisdom in Proverbs chapter number 1 
is personified as a she. But in that discourse, it say they would none of my counsel. So the ungodly didn't want none of my counsel. They didn't want none of the advice of the Lord, and they despised all of my reproof. So anybody who despises God's uh, counsel, anybody that despises God's reproof, um, they have a lack of a reverence for God. And so they're ungodly. They don't want to be like God, and they don't want to know God's ways. And unfortunately, there are people like that in this world. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. So they're going to be eternally doomed if they don't change and turn from these ways. Amen? Amen? Okay, so let's go to Daniel chapter number 3. And we'll read this one. Daniel chapter number 3, verse 15. And it says, and Now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the set buck, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music. Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And it says, who is that God shall, that shall deliver you out of my hand? Now this is Nebuchadnezzar talking to the Hebrew boys. They said, who is that God? In other words, he had a lack of reverence for the true and the living God, the almighty, the powerful God. And he said, who is that God that's going to deliver you out of my hands? In other words, he thought he was all powerful as if they didn't have God on their side. Now we know how the story went. We know that God delivered them from the burning fiery furnace. Amen. Because they threw him in. They say it's three, but we see four and one looking like the son of God. You know, so God was with them in the fire. Amen. And he did deliver them out. So God did show who was the true and the living God. Amen. Amen. But sometimes people in their, um, in their puffed upness and their pride, they think that they're above God and they are, they don't know another God, you know. And so they talk about who is that God as if they're all powerful. But God will show some of them, you know, who he really is, you know, before they meet their doom at the end. Amen. But we see at this time that the children of Israel, uh, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were godly. So they honored God. So they knew that they were never supposed to bow down to any image. That's called idolatry. Idolatry. And not only that, but they had all kind of music with it. So they had the devil's music with it. They say, we're going to play this music and we want you to bow down to this image, bow down to this thing that is not God. But we want you to give this false God some reverence, some worship. And so these uh, Hebrew boys, they didn't do it, but God delivered them because they stood up, they lifted up a standard. But they were willing to give their lives based on what they knew. They were godly young men. Amen. Amen. So Daniel, uh, also another uh, instant, instance in Daniel 3 and 18, um, is, and they said, be, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So it was the three Hebrew boys just de making a declaration that they were going to stand for their God. Um, Exodus 5 and 2, you don't have to go there. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? that I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. So Pharaoh was ungodly. He was ungodly, and he lacked the reverence for the true and the living God because he said, who is the Lord, you know, that I should obey his voice? Uh, so there's a lot of people say, who is God? I don't, who, who, show me God. You know, a lot of people, they, they're really smart and scornful and sarcastic. Show me God, you know, and I'll bow down to him. Show me God. But anyway, Pharaoh was the same way, so we find a lot of worldly leaders that are ungodly, and they lack the reverence for God. Because Pharaoh here said, who is God that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? He said, I know not the Lord, and neither will I let Israel go. So there are some people say, I don't, that ain't God, I don't know God, and I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. I'm not going to do what God say do. Amen? So we know that the way of the ungodly, what? Shall perish. Amen. So Second Chronicles, the same thing. Uh, the king of Assyria, he sent his uh, uh, captain of his army to go and let Israel know that he was going to attack them and he was going to take over. And there was nothing that 
they could do because their God could not deliver them. He wrote letters also to rail on the Lord God of Israel. So he talked about the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of mine hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of my hand. In other words, God, the God of Hezekiah could not deliver the people of Israel out of the king of Assyria's hand. So he was puffed up too. And so there's a lot of ungodly worldly leaders that are have lack of reverence. And so they're going to meet God one day. Amen. And many of them have already gone to their centers. Um, now, Zephaniah tells a little bit uh, different story, you know, showing about who the ungodly are. Zephaniah says, and it shall come to pass at that time, this is the Lord saying, I will search Jerusalem with candles and will punish the men that are settled in their leaves. In other words, even in the nation of Israel. So sometimes in, in what's supposed to be God's people, you know, they're ungodly people in the midst of God's people. They're called by God's name, but they're ungodly. It says, I will punish the men that are settled in their leaves. So God says, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled in their lives that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good neither will he do evil. Now, haven't we heard that before? People say, oh, I, people talk about this right and wrong stuff. Please, he said, God's not going to do nothing to us. He's not going to do good, and he's not going to do any evil. So those are ungodly. Their brains are, 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 are smashed pretty much, you know, but they don't believe, right? They don't believe God. But the Lord said he's going to search them out. And just like even with the New Testament church, we're supposed to be doing what's right. But the Bible says in the great house there's many vessels. Some vessels to honor and then some vessels to dishonor. So there are some people who are in the house of the Lord that dishonor God. But the Bible said judgment begins at the house of God. And so if judgment begins with the house of God, the saints, he said, where will the ungodly and the sinner man appear? So if God going to come in and, and correct the saints, where are those that are ungodly? So you know they're going to get some correction too, amen, because God corrects his people and he corrects the ones that are not saved. But anyway, he said, there's some people that sit up in the body, you know, the people of God that say the Lord will not do us good or neither will he do his evil. God, ain't gonna, God don't care about this or he don't care about that. You know, but if God said it in his word, yes, he cares about what his word says and he's going to do something about it. But if you deceive yourself or you deny it because of the deceitfulness of sin, well, then you're in trouble. But God is sending out his word so that we will know that the way of the ungodly shall perish. So even if we're in the house of God and doing ungodly things, we're going to perish. Amen. The judgment begins at the house of God. Amen. So we're going to talk about some of the characteristics of the wicked. And I'm just going to read through them real fast. It says, there's no faithfulness in their mouth. This is in Psalms. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. So some people, you know, they're just talking all the time. They're lying all the time. They're swindling and they're, they're doing things to try to flatter people to deceive, to manipulate. You know, it says there's no faithfulness in their mouth. In other words, you're not going to get the truth out of them. They're going to always have a spin on something. This is the characteristics of the wicked or the ungodly. That's in Psalms 5 and 9. It says there's no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wicked. It's in their, in their heart. They're wicked. And their throat is an open soap they flatter with their tongue. Amen. So Psalm says, Psalm 37 says, the wicked, they plot against the just or the righteous and they gnash upon them with their teeth. So you ever seen somebody just really angry about people that are righteous? You know, it says the wicked plot against the just. Amen. Also it says, uh, uh, thou lovest evil more than good and lying rather than to speak righteousness. So some people that love evil and they love to lie, that's the characteristics of the wicked people or the ungodly. Amen. Also, a Proverbs lets us know, it says, They sleep not, except they have done some mischief, and they, their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. So and if they're not doing evil, they up trying to figure out how they can do. They're not going to go to sleep until they've done something evil. So that's the ungodly and the wicked. Amen. Uh, Isaiah 1 and 4, we can go there. We'll turn there. I do want to turn there talking about the characteristics of the wicked. Isaiah chapter number 1 and verse 4. And it says, Ah, 
Now, we know Isaiah was the prophet Isaiah, and so this was written mainly about the people of God. Now, we know that he did prophesy about different things that would happen, but uh, it says, All sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. So now these people once knew the Lord. Say so they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. So backslidden people. So they're the ungodly. So people who are backslidden and they've walked away from the Lord, God considers you ungodly because you walked away from God. You walked away from the ways of God. So God considers you ungodly. And so if you're backslidden, he said the way of the ungodly shall perish. So the, in other words, if you don't want to perish, get back with the Lord. You backslidden, but come back to Jesus. Come back to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 3, it says that uh, these are the characteristics of the wicked. It says they are without natural affection. They are truth breakers. They are false accusers. They are incontinent, which means they lack self-control. They are fierce. They are cruel, despisers of those that are good. Amen? So these are some of the characteristics of ungodly people, of wicked people. When we see people like that, we know what they are. Truth breakers, you know, they're not going to hold on to their word for nothing in the world. You know, they don't mind lying and, and, and breaking a covenant or agreement. They're false accusers. They, they lie on people. They don't get on the witness stand and lie. You know, they're, they lack self-control. They're out of control. They're fierce despisers of those that are good. So these are just some of the characteristics of the the ungodly or under of the wicked. Amen. It says in Jude 4, verse 4, it says, For there are certain men, and they crept in unawares. In other words, they'll creep into the church. They crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So they're already condemned. They're just living it out. You know, they're ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So they crept in and God knew that they were not going to be any good. You know, they were ungodly men. And they turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. In other words, it's just a little, you know, just a, a lot of sinful pleasure, you know, wickedness. Amen. Jude 13 says, they are raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. They are wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. What is reserved for them? They're wicked. It says, who is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. So they're doomed to eternal damnation. Uh, so there's people like that that creep into the church. Amen? So we have to understand that God is going to punish the ungodly. So we said that they're doomed. Their end is going to be doomed. It's going to be uh, eternal damnation. Romans 1 and 18, it talks about a few things. Uh, it says, let's turn there. Romans Romans chapter 1, and we'll start at verse 18. We're going to read down quite a bit. Talking about the ungodly. Now remember I said even before I came to the Lord, a lot of my deeds were ungodly. And yes, I did some good things, uh, but I did a lot of evil, you know. A lot of, you know, fighting, cursing, stealing, you know, fornicating, you know, you name it. Uh, it was happening. I had some ungodly deeds. But thank God I changed because the grace of God, the salvation, has appeared to all men. Amen? So I thank God that when it appeared to me, I reached out and I grabbed it one day. I didn't grab it when I first heard it, but that's why I say, you know, keep putting the message out there. One day somebody's going to be ready. Amen? When you're ready, give us a call. Amen? Or go to the nearest apostolic church. When you're ready to turn away from your ungodliness, go to an apostolic church, be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And the evidence that God is going to give you that you've been filled with His Spirit is that you're going to speak in another language, another tongue, as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Amen? Okay, Romans chapter number 1, verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Wow, so some people know the truth, and they're not going to live it, and they're not going to tell it. You know, they hold the truth in unrighteousness. It said, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it to them. So God shows people his truth. 
you know, but they're going to go on and live their way and they're not going to acknowledge it as truth. It said, for the invisible things of him from creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Again, we said ungodly people are without excuse because God has given us all provisions to turn things around. So if we choose not to accept Jesus Christ and we choose not to give our lives to him we're without excuse when we stand before him on judgment day those that stand before the Lord on judgment day amen they're without excuse uh, it says because for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen everything that's around here we see God created it that shows his power it says being understood by the things that are made everything we see that is made it shows his eternal power and his godhead amen because that when they knew god they glorified him not as god and neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened so god said okay you don't want to know me he said that's okay i'll leave you to your own devices you you're you're going to become vain in your imagination and your heart is going to be darkened he said they progressed themselves to be wise but they became fools and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man. So they started all this idolatry. They didn't want to serve and worship God when he told them who he was. We remember Cain. We just talked about Cain not too long ago. How he wouldn't give God the offering that God asked. All, it was a simple thing. All he had to do was give a blood sacrifice. But rather than do that, he went and he killed his brother. You know, so sometimes people would rather go do something evil than to obey God. You know, he says he's changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image of made like unto corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. So, so what they did is they looked at what God had already created, and they went and made some images of these things and said, this is what we're going to worship and what we're going to serve. So now we see people who, who worship the moon, they worship the stars, all of those things God created. So you're taking the things that already God created, and you're going to worship them instead of worship the true and the living God. So that's ungodly. That's wicked. He said, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. So, okay, you don't want to worship me? I'll give you up to uncleanness. You know, you already have that Adamic nature through the lust of your own hearts to dishonor your own bodies. It says, wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. They didn't want to worship and serve God. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So God didn't create women to sleep with women. God created women to sleep with men. Amen. So it said, for this God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So if you're a woman sleeping with a woman, you're against the nature of God. If you're a man sleeping with a man, you're against the nature of God. And it says, and also likewise the men, leaving the natural use of the woman. So again, God made the woman for the man. It says, they burned in their lust one toward another. So men should not be with men. It said, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error that was me. So God says, I didn't create women to sleep with women, and I didn't create men to sleep with men. I created women to be with men and men to be with women. Anything other than that is against nature. It's vile. It's against God. It's ungodly. So if you're in those type of relationships where you're a woman sleeping with another woman, that's ungodly, and the way of the ungodly shall perish. If you're a man sleeping with another man, that's ungodly, and the way of the ungodly shall perish. You're going to be eternally doomed if you don't turn from that God can deliver you God can set you free but you have to surrender to the will of the Lord so there is a punishment for the ungodly God said these things are ungodly and verse 28 says and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient so there's some people that said there's nothing wrong with what we're doing they will never be able to get it right because they love that lifestyle and they don't want to honor God 
God. So they will never say that being with another woman is wrong if they're a woman. They'll never say that being with another man is wrong if they're a man. Because some of them have been turned over to a reprobate mind. They call right, wrong, and wrong, right. And, but not everyone is reprobate. So if you're one of those people and you know that you've been living that lifestyle, God say, come unto me. It's a stronghold, but I can break it. I can deliver you. People have been delivered from that, but you have to want to change. But if you don't want to change, the way of the ungodly is going to perish. So you know what you're looking for if you stay on that road. And it says, being filled with all unrighteousness. Fornication. Remember earlier, I told you I was a fornicator. You know, so if I had stayed in fornication, I was going to be eternally damned, you know, if I didn't change. Wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murdering, people out there murdering people, debating, uh, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, they're proud, they're boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding. And boy, we got a world uh, filled with people without understanding. Understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, because God is going to judge all of these things, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So there are some people, you know, they do this, but they have pleasure in doing it, you know, and they, they do the same thing. So, but the way of the ungodly, what? It's going to perish. You're going to be eternally damned. So let's go see what Peter has to say about it. And this is going to conclude our Bible study. It says, 2 Peter, we're going to go there because we're going to read this because people need to understand it. 2 Peter chapter number 2, verses 4 through 9. 2 Peter chapter number 2, verse 4 through 9. And it says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. So that's saying a whole lot. It says that God didn't spare the angels that sinned. Now we know when Satan was kicked out of heaven, uh, it's recorded in the scripture that a third of the angels went with him. So they went against God. So those angels were ungodly, so they sinned against God. God cast them down to hell, right? And he delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So they're chained in darkness. Amen? So they're going to go from hell to the lake of fire. Amen? That's going to be their judgment. So God didn't spare angels. So if God didn't spare angels, what make you think if you're ungodly, God is going to spare you? Okay, let's go to the next one. He said, he spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So when the God sent the flood, Noah built the boat. It was only eight souls saved. So God didn't spare the old world, those people that were wicked and violent. He didn't spare them, but they were, they were taken in the flood. All of creation was destroyed except eight people. So God destroyed all of the ungodly with the flood during Noah's day. So he didn't spare them. What makes you think he's going to spare you? Okay, verse 6, it said, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overflow. Now, we know what was going on with Sodom and Gomorrah. We know the men were sleeping with men there. He said, making them an example. So God made an example. He said, unto those that after should live ungodly. So God letting you know he's not, a, he's not into homosexuality and lesbianism, lesbian, gay, queer, transgender. God is not into all of that. He said he turned over the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they turned it into ashes. So he condemned that city as an example, letting everybody afterwards know that if you live that way, you're going to be destroyed. Okay, he said, but with, with uh, verse 7, he said, he delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So Lot was found to be righteous, and then God delivered him out of there. He said, for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, he vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So it said, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation, 
but to reserve the unjust, the ungodly, until the day of judgment to be punished. So God is going to judge the ungodly on judgment day. You're going to be punished if you don't change. God has given us a chance to change now. This is the dispensation of, uh, of grace. So if you're in that, God can change you. God can save you. It's not You're not hopeless. Okay? Okay, 2 Peter chapter number 3. We're going to read from verse 7 to 14. Okay? So God didn't spare uh, the angels. He didn't spare those in the old world. He didn't spare those in Sodom and Gomorrah. What makes you think he's going to spare you if you're living an ungodly life? What makes me think he's going to spare me if I'm living an ungodly life? God is no respecter of persons. Whether you're in the body or out of the body, God is going to uh, destroy the ungodly. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 7 through 14. So 7 says, but the heavens and the earth, which now are, by the same word, they're kept in store. They're reserved into fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men or the destruction of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Now God is coming back, just like he said, he's going to punish people. Verse 9 says, the Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering. Because people are laughing, talking about oh, we've been hearing about the last days and the coming of the Lord forever, you know. But the Lord, He promises He's coming back. He's not slack. He said, but He's long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. So God wants all ungodly people to repent or turn from their ungodly ways. Amen. That all people, it says, but. God is long-suffering to us, word, not willing. God is not willing that any be destroyed or perish, but that all should come to repentance. But, he says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So he's not destroying this world by water again. He's going to destroy this world by fire. Amen. And the ungodly people are going to be burned up. Amen. He said, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So when people least expect it, they're still doing their thing and their ungodly works. Uh, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation so, and godliness? So God is instructing us to be holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasten to the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness." Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, talking to the church now, the saints, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. So he wants the righteous to be found in peace without spot and without blameless because we know what's going to happen to the ungodly. So we don't want to be part of their punishment because we know better. And those that are ungodly have a chance still to be saved because the Lord hasn't come back yet. So that's the message on today. That's the Bible study on today. The way of the ungodly shall perish. Now I was one of those people before but I changed my heart and my mind and I gave my life to Christ. And so can you. So if you're doing ungodly things give your life to Christ. Be born again of the water and of the spirit. Call the number on the screen. Amen. If you're a backslider, come back to the Lord. Amen. Get things together. Get yourself together. God will accept you. He will receive you. God is still a forgiving God and his blood has never lost the power. Amen. But come out of the world and stop those sinful pleasures. Get back to living a sober, righteous life. Amen. Don't be self-absorbed and, and enjoying the pleasures of sin because it's only going to be for a season and the Lord is coming back like a thief in the night. Amen. Amen. So the way of the ungodly shall perish, but you can change. You don't have to be ungodly. You want to be ready when he comes. God bless you.